Today's video is heavily inspired by a sermon that I listened to during the preparation of this study from Vodi Bauckham. Um, so I am certainly not Vodi, and I hope that I, I do um, my in interpretation and telling of uh, a portion of his sermon um, well. And uh, yeah, it, it's an amazing sermon if you uh, search it out on YouTube, just uh, YouTube Passover Vody Bauckham and uh, it should come up. It's from 2017. Here we go. Hello everyone, this is Aaron. Today we'll be taking a look at the epic story of the Passover. Let's first get a little backstory. Starting in chapter 7, we have the start of the plagues that afflicted Egypt. Water to blood, frogs, gnats and lice, flies, a plague that affected all the livestock, boils, hail and fire, locusts, Darkness that filled the entire land. And now that brings us to the 10th plague, which is in chapter 11. This was the plague of death, death to every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on the throne to the firstborn son of the slave girl who is at her hand mill and all the firstborn of the cattle. This is found in Exodus 11.5. Even at this warning, Pharaoh did not heed Moses and Aaron's warning, and God hardened Pharaoh's heart further and would not release the Israelites. Now we get to today's chapter. He gives Moses and Aaron the breakdown as to how he will deliver the Israelites from Pharaoh. Also, the events of the plagues and the Exodus are so significant for Israel's identity that an emerging as an emerging nation that the month that they came out of Egypt will become the first month of the year according to the Hebrew calendar. The Hebrew nation was given three instructions for the Passover. The first, kill the lamb. Death was called for. For the Egyptians, it was the firstborn. For the Israelites, it was the lamb, their substitute. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 through 8 says, cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of serenity and truth. There is no salvation, no forgiveness of sin without the death and shedding of blood as an atoning sacrifice. We have examples of this as far back as the fall in the garden, when God made clothes from the skins of animals, a death to cover up Adam and Eve's nakedness. Kill the lamb. And again, we see God on Calvary once and for all crush his son, the final atoning sacrifice he killed the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. The nation of Israel needed a substitute. They needed a perfect spotless Lamb. We also are in need of a substitute, a Lamb, and that can only be found in the perfect spotless Lamb of Jesus. The second is apply the blood. The nation of Israel was told to take the blood and with the branch from the hyssop to paint the doorposts and the lentils with the blood of the lamb. So when the destroyer came, that it would pass over their house. 
1 Peter 1, 13 through 19. Therefore, prepare your mind for action. And being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, that like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. We have redemption in the blood of Jesus Christ. Kill the lamb and apply the blood. The third is to stay inside and don't go out. From the commentary of Kel and Delph, the reason for the command not to go out of the door of the house was that in this night of judgment, there would be no safety anywhere except behind the blood-stained door. The only reason you would go outside on that night would be in fear. You would be looking for security somewhere out there. So you open the door. And you leave saying that you do not believe or live in faith. And you leave and you die. There is salvation in no other. It is Christ and Christ alone. Where else are we going to go? We are tempted to put our faith in money, health care, governments, and others. But there is no security, no salvation in nothing and no one else but Jesus. We need to trust in his finishing work at the cross. God institutes the Passover and creates this as a memorial for Israel. And they will celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. And they have been celebrating it and keeping the Passover to this very day. As a reminder that blood needed to be spilt for their salvation, for their redemption. Had they only known that this was a foreshadowing of what was to come. When John in the wilderness looked up and cried out, Behold, the Lamb of God, who comes to take away the sins of the world. When Christ was lifted up on the cross, he fulfilled what was started at the Passover. He shed his blood so we might be covered, cleansed, and made fellow heirs to the kingdom. How amazing is that grace that he has bestowed on us. Let's pray. Dear Father God, thank you so much, Lord, for this epic story of the Passover, which is a foreshadowing of your finishing work on the cross. There is redemption. There is power. There is forgiveness in the blood of Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray that we do not go outside, that we hold fast and live and breathe the truth of salvation, which is only found in your Son. Let us rest in that always. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <laughs>